Hey everybody, uh, in this video we're just going to give you a quick look at the Piano for All program. A uh, great program for anybody who wants to learn how to play the piano at home and uh, actually get it done in record time. Uh, the program itself comes with 10 ebooks, 500 audio lessons, and 200 video lessons. It breaks everything down so it makes everything so quick for you. Um, you follow this basic spreadsheet. Um, you're going to start off. You're going to start learning how to play the piano in no time at all. Um, it really is a great program. And the best part is that this program works with any device that you have, whether it's Windows, Mac. Um, you can download it on your tablet if you have I, uh, Android. Uh, Apple, any any kind of program you have on your computer system or uh, device, this is going to work with it. Don't forget to like the video. And don't forget to subscribe. on how to practice in order to achieve equal capability between our two very different hands. There are different warm-up techniques I'm going to show you first in this video. And then in the next following series, we will talk about how to apply it to our practicing of different pieces. So this is what I do orally to really listen to see if the two hands are equal. I am checking for articulation, volume, evenness, things like this. And we have to be very, very honest with ourselves when we're checking. Okay, so as many of you know, keys get heavier as it goes lower. So the left hand is a little bit handicapped because we have to play the heavier part with, especially for the right-handed people, with somewhat weaker hand, right? So I do this too. And then I do different patterns like Now, when the register is different, I am not checking so much for the sound volume, but the shaping of the, the musical shaping of the patterns and if the notes are even um, equally and things like this. Now, these were oral checking, now visual checking. So, you want to make sure that both hands move um, in the same way, approximately. I find that my left hand is less rhythmical than my right hand and it has to do with its motions, I think. So I'm making sure I use the keyboard symmetrically. symmetrically. Uh, I did this in the warm-up video as well and then I move with the same fingering in opposite directions and check to see what my two hands are doing differently and then when I see differences I try to match my weaker hand to the stronger hand and so mirror image right so how high my fingers are being raised where in the keys are we playing the more towards the edge of the keys we're playing on the easier it becomes right easier to control the keys so I'm always trying to play close as close to the edge of the keys as possible and balancing my hands on each finger so the timing of the finger raising for example and if my knuckles are as high or as low and I'm trying to much And 
you know, while I'm checking visually, I'm also tactily feeling if they feel the same, if they're feeling the notes the same way. And even though I am focused on my fingers, I want to make sure that my postures are good. I am playing from my back, right? And there are airs in my underarms, so I'm not like constricted like this, right? I'm not just focused on my fingers. Breathing is always good. Breathing is good for perspective, like mental perspective, but it's also good to relax your body. If you, when you find yourself um, not breathing, that means that you have tension in your body. Be more aware of your breathing as you're practicing. So I do check visually to see that my two hands look the same and right now they're doing pretty well but I also when I've checked I close my eyes because that allows me to hear and feel better my tactile sensations. So closer my two hands are, more room I want to give them, right? Naturally. Finger also symmetrical. <laughs> 